from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Did you know that we have a Facebook page? I'd like to invite you to follow us on Facebook, where we post all sorts of great content, including commentaries, interviews, and features. Just go to facebook.com slash djameskennedy and click like. On the recent BBC series, Planet Earth 2, part of the documentary shows the lives of two snow leopards that they filmed in the mountains of Afghanistan. Snow leopards happen to be one of the rarest animals in all of nature. They are seldom seen in the wild due to the small remaining population and the fact that they only live in extremely high altitudes. There are an estimated 5,000 remaining snow leopards in the wild. The cameras follow the journey of a mother snow leopard and her cub trekking through the rugged terrain in search of their next meal. Just like all other animals in nature, the adult must teach the child the ways of the world in which they live. They teach their children how to provide for themselves, how to survive, and how to navigate the world on their own. It is no easy task to train your child in the right way, to prepare them for the challenges the world will bring them, and to help them navigate on their own. There are constant forces at work that seek to dismantle everything you taught your children, including their worldview and their faith. Dr. D. James Kennedy takes a closer look in his classic message, Train Up a Child. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the 22nd chapter of the book of Proverbs. May we give our careful attention to the word of our God. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor than silver and gold. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way for the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And may God speak to us today through this, his holy word, and may his name ever be praised. Amen. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. For many centuries, Christians have taken those words very seriously as they have attempted to rear up their children and train them in the fear and admonition of the Lord, to teach them godly living, moral conduct. They bring them to church and to Sunday school. They teach them in the home and pray with them and for them. There is an old aphorism that says, as the twig is bent, so grows the tree. Well, there is a small army of twig twisters who are active today in our society who are determined that these trees will not grow straight and tall. A force which is dedicated to undoing everything which you as parents are attempting to do in your homes, with your children, and which we are attempting to do in the church and the Sunday school. I speak of the change agents, as they like to call themselves, in our public school system. This growing body of individuals committed 
to no belief in God or religion at all, committed to no belief in moral absolutes, committed to no commitment to this nation, but rather to a one-world government, to socialism, and to the destruction of all traditional moral values. Interestingly enough, they have been very successful at dropping a veil over much of what they have done and are doing. Some of you as parents will hear things today that will shock you. I am particularly grateful to the work of uh, S.D. Reed and to the U.S. Department of Education for some of the material that I will be bringing to you today. Many of you don't know that your children don't bring home all of their textbooks that they're not allowed to bring some books out of the classroom, that you will not be allowed to see these books if you go to the school and inquire, that in some cases it has involved congressmen, senators, and even the courts in order to get parents the right to read some of the texts or see some of the motion pictures that are being shown to our children. And I believe that it's important that American parents know what is happening in our school system. Jock Barzun, a well-known author, has said that the once proud American public education system has become a wasteland where vice and violence share time with ignorance and idleness. Now those are strong words. Are they justified? Let me make one thing clear as I endeavor today to try to rip away some part of that veil in order that parents might see the minefield into which they are ushering their children each morning. First of all, I realize that all schools, all public schools in this country are not cut out of one piece of cloth. Though the National Education Association is doing everything in its power to accomplish precisely that and to make all of our public schools exactly the same. As they draw more and more power away from the local grassroots, and the parents and school boards into the Washington bureaucracy under the control of the Teachers Union, the National Education Association, a very far left-wing group who is committed to the very antithesis of almost everything that you and I believe. Is uh, our Barzun's words an exaggeration? Well, listen to the conclusion of the National Commission on Excellence. This was a blue ribbon bipartisan commission which made an extensive examination of our public school system. The report was entitled, A Nation, A Nation at Risk. And they warned Thusly, quote, the educational foundations of our society are being eroded by a rising tide of mediocrity that threatens our very future as a nation and a people. And they went on to say that if what has happened to our educational system had been done by a foreign power, it would be considered an act of war. That is what the National Educational Association and the leaders of our public school movement have accomplished is so devastating to the very fiber foundation fabric and future of America that if it had been done by a foreign power it would be considered an act of war against America and against the families thereof. Our very ability to survive, they said, and compete as a technological nation is being severely jeopardized. And what did they indicate as some 
of the signs or symptoms of that? 23 million Americans are now functionally illiterate. After spending hundreds of billions of dollars on education, the illiteracy rate in this country has increased five times over. The SAT scores, our scholastic aptitude test scores, have dropped almost 100 points since 1963 when prayer and Bible were taken out of the schools. This is what is being perpetrated not only on the American children, but the American economy, the American security, the American nation itself. Of course, there are other problems as well, rising drug and alcohol consumption in schools, widespread promiscuity, pregnancy, abortion, discipline problems, declining religiosity, lack of of uh, any sort of discipline, vandalism in the schools, rape, mugging, and a skyrocketing rate of suicide. It's indeed a tragic picture that has been produced. Teachers have told the students that there are no moral absolutes and that they should do whatever feels right. But you know, sometimes our chickens come home to roost. And the NEA has complained that in one year alone, 120,000 teachers were physically assaulted by students in our public schools. Well, maybe it just felt right. <laughs> I'm not sure but that I had some such feelings when I was in school, but we were told if it feels good, do it. We were told that there were certain standards of decency and morality. 120,000 teachers assaulted by students in our schools. Our headmaster just yesterday told me that one family in this church has two children in the public school. In one day, two girls got in a fight by the lockers. And one girl pulled out a razor and cut the other girl's face and her eyeball while the other student reported that in his class, one of the students beat up the teacher. One day here in Broward County, many parents have become increasingly concerned. The National Commission on Excellence said that the parents should become involved in every aspect of their children's education. They should get involved. But what is the National Education Association, the union of teachers? They don't want the parents involved. In fact, they want lay people to bug out of the whole educational system. NEA Today, a magazine, their official magazine, complains, quote, the Alabama Education Association fought unsuccessfully this year to keep its state legislature from increasing the proportion of lay citizens on the state textbook committee. They don't want parents to know what's in these textbooks, and they don't want them to select them. They want this left to the professional educators who are increasingly incompetent to do so and who share moral views which are diametrically opposite to the prevalent views in this country anyway. And what inflammatory rhetoric they use about parents. If you want to get involved, with your students in their schools, be ready to be called the following. Fascists, censors, witch hunters, hate mongers, energized super patriots, wayward dogma peddlers. And what many people don't realize is that there has been a total change in the whole philosophy and understanding of what is to take place in school. What happens in school? What do you send your children to school for? Why, you say, I send my children to school in order that they may learn, that they may learn how to read and write, they may get an education. May I say to you, my friends, that is no longer the official philosophy of what takes place in school. 
As one leading educator pointed out, all of our children entering the public school system are sick. That's why. That's why we need clinics, therapists, and treatment, because all of the children are sick. You say, what have they got, the measles, the flu? No, they're suffering from a much more malignant disease. They're suffering from love of country, respect for our elected officials and for those in authority, a belief in God and religion, belief in moral absolutes, sexual bias. Ah, they must be cured of their sexual bias. What is their sexual bias, you say? They are biased toward heterosexual relationships. That bias will be cured. you didn't understand that, you better wake up. Now, it's interesting that in the early years of this country, virtually all, in fact, 100 percent of our primers in the first 25 years of our nation were taken from the Bible. People learned to read from the scriptures. Because you'll recall in the Mayflower Compact, the pilgrims said that they wanted to teach their children how to read in order that they could read the Bible. Well, we've come a long way from the scriptural quotations of the early primers or the moral instruction contained in that stalwart Episcopal clergyman's readers known as McGuffey. As Paul Blanchard, one of our nation's leading humanist educators said, it may be that Johnny can't read, but the very fact that he is compelled to go to public school for 12 years means that his mind is divested of all of that religious superstition. What is that religious superstition? It's what all of you believe. There is a God. Christianity is true. The Bible is the word of God. There are moral absolutes. All of that religious superstition will be eradicated from his mind. So first, we get rid of religion. Secondly, we get rid of patriotism. One world government is the desire for the modern humanist educators. One of the textbooks for teachers puts it this way. Listen, what the teachers are being taught. Quote, allegiance to a nation, allegiance to a nation is the biggest stumbling block to creation of international government. National boundaries and the concept of sovereignty must be abolished. The quickest way to do this is to condition the young to another and broader alliance. Opinion favorable to international government will be developed in the social studies in the elementary school. And then there is socialism. It's interesting that the public school movement began with socialists. The first organized protest against private and religious schools was begun after 200 years of private and religious education in this country in 1818. Robert Owen, a self-proclaimed socialist, began to promote the idea of public education secular education where socialist values could be inculcated. The respected economist Milton Friedman calls education, quote, the only bastion of socialism in a sea of free enterprise in America. Where is the only bastion of socialism in America? It's in our public schools. And all of their values will be changed and all of their morals will be undermined. These are the change agents in our schools. 
These are the therapists, the psychosocial therapists in the clinics who are treating your children. These are people that you need to know about. What can you do? Well, that is a very difficult question. Certainly, if you're involved in the public schools, you should stand up and find out what's going on and do everything you possibly can to change it. And I thank God for Christian teachers who are teaching the public school system and are bringing to bear some element of sanity and morality. Whether that's possible or not, I don't know. The NEA is incredibly powerful and incredibly entrenched. It may be that it can't be changed. Then there is the alternative of private education. You say, well, that is for the elite and the rich. It's a matter of priorities. It's a matter of what is more important, your child's soul and mind or the second car. A trip to the mountains. Many Christians in previous years were willing to sacrifice greatly for their children. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he, one way or the other, will not depart from it. As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. May we pray. Father, we pray that thou will deliver this nation from the twig twisters that are producing bent, deformed, and illiterate children. We pray, O oh God, that the moral foundations that made this country great may again become the inheritance of the young. Help us, O oh Lord, to heed your admonition to train up our children in the way that they should go. For Christ's sake, amen. Hello, I'm Rob Pacienza, senior pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church. And what a wonderful promise we have from Proverbs. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But we can't train up our children in God's ways if we don't know him. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you know that He died on the cross for you in order that you might have fellowship with Him? He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. That's fellowship. And even more amazing is that God offers us that fellowship now and forever in heaven if we simply place our trust in His Son, Jesus Christ. If you're ready to transfer your trust from your own efforts to get to heaven and instead trust in Jesus Christ for eternal life, then we can go to God in prayer right now. Simply pray this with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner and that you died for sinners like me. Forgive me. I want to have fellowship with you and know the full life that you have in store for me. I transfer my trust to you and ask you to help me live for you from this day forward. In your name I pray, amen. I hope you prayed that prayer, and if you did, we'd like to send you Beginning Again, which is exactly what you're doing. In these pages, you'll learn what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ and how to grow in your faith. This is a wonderful tool, and you can receive it by writing to our address or calling our toll-free number. Be sure to ask for beginning again, and God bless you as you do. As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. What a perfect and simple way to summarize the importance of training up our children and properly equipping them. Today, young men and women eagerly embark on their adulthood without being properly equipped. The culture seeks to chip away at their faith and dismantle their worldview. Many of the ideas and concepts forced on to the younger generations 
can actually be traced back to several radical progressives from history past. While these men are all dead, much of what they believed is being used to chip away at these young adults' faith. We want to send you an important book about this called Seven Men Who Rule the World from the Grave by Dave Breeze. The ideas of these seven men, including Karl Marx, Charles Darwin, Sigmund Freud, and John Dewey, still exert a powerful, pervasive, often unseen influence on our daily lives. Find out how and discover how the truth of Christ refutes them in this powerful book. We'll send you Seven Men Who Rule the World from the Grave as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069 or go online to djkm.org. One of those seven men, Karl Marx, propounded economic theories that are still in vogue today to the detriment of millions. Yet, former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders holds to Marx's ideas, as do more than 40% of American millennials, according to one recent poll. It is crucial that you know the flaws with Marx's system and why it should be abandoned in America. We expose the truth in a hard-hitting DVD program entitled Three Big Lies of Socialism. And we'll send it to you as well as the book Seven Men Who Rule the World from the Grave as our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more to the ongoing work of this ministry. And as you give, you will be helping us broadcast programs like this, holding the lies of the culture up to the truth of Scripture, as well as to move forward in our other ministry initiatives, such as our D. James Kennedy Center for Christian Leadership in Washington, D.C., and more. So please, give generously. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 888-332-3069. Or go online to djkm.org. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics. We'll see you next time. Today's program is available on DVD or audio CD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.